Hello everyone, my name is Christy Buckmiller and I'm here from GIFT Bible Studies and this is lesson three of the Give Thanks book. It is called Men Will Praise. It's based off of Psalm 107. So I'm going to be reading it today and going over it and just allowing men to praise the Lord. Okay, so we're going to start off. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Notice how this is going to be listed several times in here. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. How important are our testimonies? Sometimes I feel like as believers, we don't testify of as much as we should. We should be testifying all the time. Any chance you can get to say what the Lord has done in your life, do it. It is so important. A lot of times we don't realize how important it is, but it is, it is very, very important. Okay, and gather them out of the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south they wandered in the wilderness in solitude way and they found no city to dwell in hungry and thirsty their soul fainted in them then they cried unto the lord in their trouble and he delivered them out of their distresses isn't the lord good so they were wandering around hungry and thirsty and the Lord delivered them when they cried and he led them forth by the right way and they might go to the city of habitation oh that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works in to the children of men for he satisfied the longing soul and filled the hungry soul with goodness he satisfies the longing soul. When you long for his ways and his presence, he will satisfy you. He will. He always comes through. Such as sit in darkness in the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron. So they were abound in their trouble and they were abound in oppression when they were doing this because they rebelled against the words of God they rebelled and so they were bound this is what happens when we take too much pride and we have too much pride and decide to go our way and not the Lord's way and con and condemned the counsels of the Most High so they provoked the counsels they mocked them the counsels of the Most High have you ever felt like you're being mocked for Christianity? It happens. Um, grace is so important. Grace to people and prayer is so important. Therefore, he brought down their hearts with labor and they fell down and there was none to help. So when they mocked the people of the Most High, God brings them down with labor um, and they fell up. Uh, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and they, he saved them. So after they did that, and after he fell, they fell down with labor for mocking and rebelling against God. God, it, when they cried, God saved. It, isn't he wonderful? Uh, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. He... So then they cried in their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of the darkness of the shadow of death and break their bounds of sunder. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. So he has, he cuts and destroys all of our oppression, all of our trouble, all of our affliction, everything, everything. He gets through all that. Nothing is too hard for him. Nothing. 
sometimes we put him in a box and we want him to do certain things the way we, we can't God doesn't work that way hence the reason why we say not my will but yours be done okay so fools because of their transgression and because of their iniquities are afflicted so fools are afflicted because of their own doings their own ways they have sowed that they did that their soul hoardeth all men manner of meat and they draw near unto the gates of death they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. Are we seeing a pattern here? Over and over again, the Lord saves people out of their distresses. He's wonderful. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction, from their own destructions. He delivers from their own problems. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. So it's saying, it's calling sacrifice, it's calling thanksgiving sacrifice. I believe it calls it that because sometimes it is a sacrifice sometimes there's going to be times in life that you do not want to give things you are going to not feel like praising god but it is that's why it's so important to always keep in our minds get out of our own stuff get out of our own problems and think about what the lord has done for you and if you're a new believer and he, you haven't he hasn't done if you can't see it think about all the promises he's done to other people and that's why it's important to get into this word so you can know what the things he has done and think on those things and praise him for those things praise him for those things thank him for the things he's done and the marvelous works that he's done and it you come out of it when you do that okay they that go down into the sea ships that that do business in great water so people that are on boats and they are traveling in the boats. These see the works of the Lord in his wonderful wonders in the deep. For he commanded the rising, the rises stormy wind, which lifted up the waves, and they mount up to the heavens, and they go down again in the depths. Their soul is melted because of trouble. So he, I mean, I know you even if you haven't been on a boat, you've been in you've seen movies where the waves just, I mean, go up and down and they're, they're huge and then they go back down. That's what they're talking about right here. And the, it says their souls melted because of trouble. I would be pretty scared too. I don't know about you. They reel to and fro and stagger like drunken men and are at wit's end. Because they're, they can't balance. They're like, I mean, has your life ever been filled like that? Where you're off balance and you're teetering tottering but then they cried unto the lord in their trouble and he bringeth them out of their distresses he brought them out again he maketh the storm calm so the waves therefore are still then are they glad because they be quiet so he bringeth them unto their desired haven so he brought them to where they were wanting to go in the end. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and his wonderful works. The children of men, let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. He turneth rivers into the wilderness and water springs into dry ground. A fruitful land into a barren. So you're telling me that the Lord has the power to change the weather. To cause an area to dry out or to cause an area to be fruitful. Bring rain or stop the rain. The world tries to tell you it's something else. And man has to do with it. But 
sorry to say, guys. Well, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry to say, but God has been doing and handling the weather from the beginning of time. Nothing we can do ultimately can change that. He is in control. And whatever that is happening, he is in control of it. He can stop anything whenever he wants to. He's preparing this earth for his coming. So he turned his wilderness into standing water and dry ground into water springs. And there he maketh the hungry to dwell, that they may prepare a city for habitations. And sow fields and plant vineyards, which may yield fruits of increase. He blessed them also so that they are multiplied greatly and suffer not their cattle and decrease. He will move and he will bless. And they are minished and brought low through oppression. And again, they are brought low. So affliction and their sorrow. He poureth contempt upon the princes and causes them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. So if you're not following the Lord and you don't, he will pour, he will, he does things, guys. He is a powerful God and we, we need to praise him. We need to praise him for the things he's, he is, just who he is. Yet sitteth, he the poor on high affliction and make it them him families like a flock the righteousness sh sh shall see it and rejoice and all the inquinity shall stop her mouth whoso is wise and will observe these sayings even they shall understand the loving kindness of the lord God is good, guys. He is worthy to be praised. So whatever that you're going through today, whatever, if you feel like you're on that ship and it's going up and down and around and just craziness, you feel like your balance is totally off. We've been there. I've been there. I've dealt with things. We all have. We all have. And we're in this together. We're in this together. But today, I want you to just praise him. Lift up your hands and praise him for his wonderful works. He is an amazing, amazing God. And he deserves all the glory. All the glory. Everything. Thank you for listening to this. This is, once again, from the Give Thanks. This is lesson three. Men will praise so if you're interested in this study that you can do as a family it is at giftbiblestudy.com and um, there is an advanced there's a junior there is a elementary a new reader and a pre-reader or pre not a pre-reader a preschooler age where they can y'all can do it together as a family or Y'all can do it separately, or it can just be the, for the parent, whatever y'all want to do. But um, it's time to praise the Lord. Give him thanks today and always.